Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! I can't wait to show you the new catalog. This is the cover and you can see some little hints of what's inside. I just love the catalog and I know you will too. If you have purchased from me in the last six months, you will get one of these in the mail. If you don't have a demonstrator and you'd like to get one, shoot me an email and I'll get one to you. I have been busy at work helping myself and you get organized. Let me show you some of the things that I will be posting tomorrow. Stampin' Up! will be releasing images on August 25th. I think that's when I can share my organizational tips. I don't want to be in violation of the rules sharing too much too soon. Here's what I'll post. I have created strips that will go into the stamp cases, but I put the recommended blocks and I also put, for instance, if it comes in both wood and clear, I put both numbers on here. I put how many items in the set. I also show which catalog it came from and the page you can find it. I find that very helpful. If the stamp set coordinates with thinlets or punches, I put that on. Let me show you how these work. I, first of all, I print them on just regular copy paper and then I cut them up on a faint line. I don't even know if you can see those lines. I hold the stack two or three at a time to make sure that they are all lined up. Sometimes they don't quite line up in the printer, but then I just cut these out. One thing that I have to warn you about, they are in alphabetical order, top to bottom, but as soon as you want to stack them up, you have to put them back in alphabetical order. So I like to keep my stacks in order. Then I just take the top one off of each stack, work my way down, and then they'll be in alphabetical order. Once they're all stacked up, I just wrap one of the scraps around. Add a little adhesive. Don't wrap it too tight because you want to be able to pull those out the, when you purchase your stamps. If you only buy a few stamp sets, you can print one or two sheets. That's okay. I go ahead and print all of them. And so then when it comes time to put them in my stamp case, I just go through alphabetical order. And then I open up my stamp set. And you can just slip it in here. If you want to add a little bit of adhesive, you can. But I find that they usually stay put, just like that, as soon as you close your stamp set. And I usually keep this. Our stamps come with directions on how to um, assemble them. But I always keep those sticker sheets right in there, and then it's ready to go. So I have all the information I need. I do have it color-coded. I This year, I used the same color as the annual catalog, and then the recommended blocks and the coordinating products are on the back. I should probably start putting the French and German versions on here. I used to put the prices on, and that got to be a problem for people in especially South Pacific. They also use the dollar signs like we do here in the U.S. and yet the prices are really different so they didn't want to have U.S. prices showing. But you might want to pr put the prices in for the stamp sets. Having those prices here is really helpful if you decide to sell the stamp set later. If you're a fan of the wood mount cases you can still use my regular stamp slips and they come around this way, and the information is still on the back. I have some large labels for designer series paper and the 12 by 12 cardstock. I also print these on just regular copy paper. I just cut them up on the lines, and I use fast fuse to adhere them to my plastic envelopes. If you can't find plastic envelopes, I have some 12 by 12 bags that you can use for your 12 by 12 and I also have some that are perfect for the 6 by 6. 
These labels are not just for the cardstock. I also have them for the treat tubes, um, the mini pizza boxes, and other items that you might want to store in a large envelope. Somebody else asked me to make labels. They specified the size and the way they wanted it. So I print these up for just the designer series paper. I have those for you if those work for your labels. These labels are about four, a little over four by one and a quarter or so, a little bit larger. I also have a DSP sampler. You would cut these up and also cut your designer series paper to be two by three and then put your two by three cardstock in here. This is a little bit larger than two and so these work kind of like tabs. You can see all the the names of the designer series paper this way and it has all the coordinating colors and the catalog and the page number and the item number for you. I was thrilled to finally find a way to label my washi tape. There's only one new washi uh, set and so I put it on the same page as my 1718. There are quite a few items that will fit in our clear cases and so I make case inserts for those things. Again, I you can print it on plain paper, stack it up and look through to make sure your lines line up. They should. Cut those out. And I print these up just for the items that I purchase. These take a full sheet each. And once again, we're going to open up the case. Slip this in. When you do print these, you do need to print them full size so they fit. They're a little bit smaller than the sheet, but these can go nicely on a shelf. Look beautiful with your stamps. And for the Big Shot dies, I open those up and the very first thing I do is photocopy the dies on the sheet as they are. When I print them, I print them on colored cardstock. Sometimes I have printed them on white paper and one time I lost a die because I didn't recognize that this was not the actual die. So don't do that. The next step is to remove them from the cardstock and they stick really well. Um, you can pull them off. I usually end up ruining the, the cardboard. And so if you take your heat tool and heat them up, it will soften the adhesive. So just adhere the photocopy. I like to keep mine on magnetic sheets. I got my magnetic sheets from Amazon as a stack of eight and a half by 11 and I'm doubling them up by putting them on the card on the cardboard that it came on and I know exactly where they go and I know for sure for sure that they will fit in this package and I can easily spot which ones where they go and which ones might be missing and I love this method Once you have them here, you can put them back in the package. I usually put this on the back, slide them in, and sometimes I cut this down so it fits in there easily. So I can see what it is on this side, and I can see what it is on this side. And I have labels that I can put on these packages. And I usually put it on the side without the ridges and I put it up here and so I file them in my box like that. But some people like to keep them in the cases so I also make case inserts for these. Now if you're going to do this I probably would just adhere the the magnet sheet directly to the case or because I didn't I can adhere that to the case and that can go on my shelf like that. I kind of whizzed past my little labels 
I make little labels for everything else, basically. I find these especially wonderful for embossing folders and for the punches. I love this cat punch. Um, the cat, the punches don't have any kind of name on them, so I find them especially helpful for naming these punches. So I bought the cat punch, the leaf punch, and I think one of my favorite is this label punch, and I couldn't remember the name of it, but here it is, the everyday label punch. Love this punch. But there are a few products that I know will probably fit better in the wide mount, in the wide mount, like our ink refills and that sort of thing. I made a label for the treat tubes. Now, I mentioned that I have a treat tube label in the large labels, because I wasn't quite sure how they would come, but the treat tubes case insert fits in our wide stamp case. They come in this box, and I have to tell you that the caps are just kind of set in, so before you do anything, I would take a minute to push those down a little bit, and then put them in here. Now, they don't all sit flat, but they sit flat enough to close the box. So I will be keeping my treat tubes in the case. I like neat and tidy stamp shelves. I also have all the new products in my Evernote notebook. The Evernote notebook becomes a searchable catalog. I just wanted to show you the Painted Harvest Bundle. Love this set. I think it's one of my favorites. So I will be moving these notes into the current products notebook and if you would like to share my current products notebook, just send me an email and I will share my notebook with you. If you are already sharing my Evernote notebook of current products, you don't need to do anything. These products will show up in your synchronized notebook as soon as I move them in and you synchronize your folder. So I have all my new products all labeled. Um, I am not like some people that seem to order everything in the catalog. I have decided to be mean with myself and if I cannot schedule a demonstration for a product, I am not going to allow myself to buy it and oh that hurts. So these are the products that made my short list. I had a comment below on either my YouTube channel or on my website. Tell me what is your favorite product in the new catalog. And again, if you want one, come on over to BevAdams.com. Click Contact Me to send me your address, and I'll get a catalog out to you. This catalog goes live on September 1st. You can be a demonstrator and get some of the products from this catalog right now. But if you're a customer, you'll have to wait till September 1st to put in your order. But you'll have all your labels ready for you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.